Hello, I'm Philip Cameron, and you have stumbled across Daily Faith. This is a program that is designed, I believe, from the heart of God to join you with us to believe God for miracles regarding your family's salvation. God has a purpose and a plan for you and your family. God is a family man. I, I, can't, I can't understand the strength and the might and the power and the wealth of God. He and I have got nothing to discuss when it comes to wisdom. He, I, I don't understand his power. But there's one thing that he and I uh, have in common, one common thing. He's a dad, and so am I. And he knew the pain of losing his only boy so that I can have the joy of knowing that my boys are going to be saved. And you are watching this program today because God has a purpose for your family. And the purpose is this, that all of them are going to get saved in the name of Jesus. And that's why God has allowed you and me to meet together here today. I can't wait to share some incredible stuff that God will put into your spirit and give you authority in your circumstance. I'm so glad you joined me today. Welcome to Daily Faith. There is nothing more powerful than knowledge, knowing something inside. Nothing gives you authority in a circumstance. Ever had an argument with someone that didn't know what they were talking about? And they can, some, usually, the less you know, the louder you, you speak, the, the more volume you have. But when you, when you have the authority of knowledge, that you can look to someone and say, that's not true, this is true. And knowledge, that power that comes from knowledge, is the very thing that the devil fears most in your life. Do you know that the devil trembles every time you use the name of Jesus? Do you know that? Do you know that when you talk about the blood of Jesus, that every demon in hell and Satan himself quakes because the blood is the, is the separation point between me as a, a human frail being to becoming a son and an heir of Jesus Christ? When the blood of Jesus is applied to me, then suddenly I am no longer someone at the, at the whim and the mercy of the devil. The whole thing turns, and I have authority over the, the powers of darkness by the blood of Jesus. He said, if you ask anything in my name, it shall be given unto you. His name gives you the authority and the power over your circumstance. And I'm watching you right now. As sure as I'm sitting talking to someone, you have been beat up by your circumstance recently. Your family may be in shambles. Your marriage is on the rocks. Financially, stuff just is falling apart. And the devil is there at night. So when you put your head on the pillow, hell breaks out inside your head. Every fear, every demon that can come and tell you that it's not going to work and this is going to happen to your kids or your grandkids. Maybe you're, you're a grandparent. I'm a grandparent of six grandkids and, and, and I live for my grandbabies. And I can't even imagine how it must be for a grandparent to think, I wonder where my grandson is. I wonder what's happening. Let me tell you something. There is a knowledge, there is a power that you can have from God that overwhelms every act of hell and every power of Satan working against you. It is the power of God that you have when you use his name. When I was a wee boy back in Scotland, in case you wonder where I come from, I'm Scottish. My dad sent me down one day to a shop in town called Bruce the Ironmonger. It was the most incredible place in the world. Every bit and bob of every kind of thing, of everything you get was in that shop. It was a, like a, an old-fashioned Home Depot, but it was better than Home Depot by a mile. All the men wore gray um, coat kind of things, and, and all the, the, the screws and the bolts were, were loose in, in metal containers, and you can smell the oil of all the different stuff, and 
everything you'd imagine was in Bruce the Ironmonger's. So my dad was fixing the house, I forget what he was doing, and he says, Philip, I need you to, to run an errand for me. And I says, okay, Dad. I must have been 10, maybe. And he says, I want you to go down to Bruce the Ironmonger's, and he gave me a list. And he says, you take that down there, and you give it to a fellow with gray hair. He described the, fe the, the fellow. And I says, okay, Dad. So off I went. And as, I don't know if you do this. Maybe you're not so mean as me and my dad. And, but w when I sent one of my grandkids, or, or Melody, when, when she was little, I would say to her, you know, go and get this for me, and I'm counting. So they would run away, and I would say, one, two, three, and they'd run the legs off because I'm counting. And after five, I'd stop counting, and then I'd hear their footsteps, and I'd say, 21, 22, 23, and they'd come back gasping. I was as fast, oh yeah, well, yeah, wow, you did that in 21. I, I got all my grandkids getting water from the fridge, and um, six is my normal number I start when they finally get back. My dad sent me down to Bruce the Adam Munger with his note, and I because he was counting, I ran all the way down, and I got into the shop, and I, I found the fella that he described, and I walked up, and I says, hello, um, this is from my dad, my name is Philip Cameron, and I gave this fella this piece of paper. And he took it, and he, was, he suddenly got very serious. Okay, then thank you, wait, it'll be a few minutes, wait a moment. And this guy takes off around the shop. And I mean, he's climbing up ladders and picking this down and taking this back and, and, and wrapping this stuff in brown paper with a, a piece of tape on it. There was no bags and plastic bags and Ziploc bags back then. And, and I'm standing there and I'm mesmerized because it was the first time I'd seen an adult do what I told them to do. And he is, I mean, Mel, he was breathless getting all this stuff. And the more I watched him, the more powerful I got. And I was standing there all proud of myself because he, I, this guy was doing what I, he told, I told him to do. No, he wasn't. I was only the message boy sent from the man in the house, Simon Cameron. And I had only been given a measure of transferred authority. I was there in his name, my dad's name, he knew Simon Cameron. He didn't know who I was. He didn't know my name. But that wasn't important. What was important was the person who had sent me had authority, real authority. And all I was was, was his representative in the circumstance. But when you're 10 years of age and you put that piece of paper in the adult's hand and he scampers all over the place and gets all the stuff and puts it in a, a, a sack and he gives it to me and he says, there you are, tell your father I said hello and I got all, and I dragged and pulled that bag home and I never felt so important in my life. You see, it wasn't my authority that counted. It was he who sent me that counted. And in your circumstance, it does not depend on you. You're not fighting the devil with your power. You're not going against your circumstance alone. You're not there hoping to build up enough courage to fight the bogeyman. I've got great news for you. He has given you authority in his name. That when you say it in the name of Jesus, the Bible tells us, Every knee shall bow, every tongue shall confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God. So I want to encourage you. You are not battling this battle today by yourself. You're like me when I was a wee boy back in Scotland. You have the power to stand up and say, devil, I'm not here because it's just me. I'm here because my dad said this is what's going to happen. And my father said that as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. My father tells me that this is for me and for my children and for my children's children to a thousand generations. And I'm going to tell you something. If you resist the devil, he's going to flee from you. Now that doesn't mean casually walk away. It means he's going to put his running shoes on and run like a rabbit away from you because he's no longer fighting you. He's fighting the power of God that is in you through Jesus Christ. The Bible says this, 
that the same Spirit, if the same Spirit that raised Christ from the dead dwell in you, He will quicken your mortal body. God's Spirit is in you. And by being in you, it gives you the authority to look at your circumstance. And I just challenge you right now. If it's finances, I come against poverty in your life in the name of Jesus. If it's against sickness, I curse sickness at the roots. And by the blood of Jesus and by the stripes upon his back, I claim healing in your family, in your body now, in Jesus' name. Because of the promise of God in Acts 16, 31. Believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. You shall be saved and your house. I claim for you today a breakthrough of household salvation that's going to blow your mind. That your loved one that you think is impossible, the worst one, is going to get saved first. The one that has broken your heart so many times you don't know what to do. Well, today you and I are taking authority and agreement and we are saying... In the name of Jesus, get your hands off my family. Get your hands off my home. And I plead the blood over this place. And by, because of the transferred authority of Jesus, I claim total household salvation. It is your moment to believe God. And I agree with you. Look, at the end of the program, there'll be addresses. I want you to send me your loved one's name. Write down the first name and just say, hey, Philip, watch your program. John, I'm praying for John to get saved. And I promise you, I will hold John's name in my hand and believe for a breakthrough. I want you to get this book. It's a book called Full House. I wrote it especially for you to see your family saved. Watch this. Full House. It's time for household salvation. We'll help you see your unsaved loved ones in a totally different light. God has given Philip insight into God's promise of household salvation. Do you know that you have a covenant throughout Scripture that promises that your family are part of your eternal inheritance? Philip's family was bound in alcoholism for over 200 years. And through the miraculous story as told in Full House, Jesus saved the Camerons. And in the span of six weeks, 67 of the Cameron family were saved. This book will change your life. Order Full House today and believe with Philip to see what God will do in your family. To order, please visit www.philipdcameron.com or call 1-833-DAILY-FAITH or contact us by mail. Post Office Box 24 Two two four six Montgomery, Alabama, three six one two four. There's a miracle coming for your family. Now listen to me. I'm telling you now. I sense this in my spirit that you've been you've been fighting the devil on your own power. You've been trying to battle this thing through by yourself, and it's not that's none of your business. The quicker you give it up to Jesus, the quicker His power will become made manifest in your life. This book, I promise you. I promise you, this book will change how you think about your family getting saved. You need a change of mind, his mind being in you. And instead of being everything being impossible, everything will turn into a possibility. You have the power in God to tell the devil to get out of your family. It's your right to do so. And in this book, that we, that we snippet I gave you just now with transfer authority. It's in this book. You need to read that and get that in your spirit. There's also one about transferred power that you need to get into your spirit as well because it will change how, you, how your relationship is with Jesus, but also how your relationship with, is with the power of darkness. This book, it, this is the second edition. The first book I wrote this, this book sold 300,000 copies and thousands upon thousands upon thousands of family members got saved. And it's time to get your loved ones saved. Do you believe that? Well, do something about it, Mel. What do you think? Amen. Absolutely. Do you love Jesus? I do. This is my daughter, Melody. Yeah. And I sure love her. We have... Um, I, God gave me this vision of household salvation and then also gave me a, another vision, and that was of mission work in Eastern mm -hmm. Europe. And um, she and my oldest son, Philip, were born, 
and, and I thought we were finished having kids, and then God sent me to Romania, and I adopted a wee boy from an orphanage, and that little boy, his name is Andrew, totally changed my life and set me on a, a, on a path that continues to this day, and that is to rescue the orphan that's in terrible distress. And I'll be honest with you, my kids are saved by grace because I was gone so much of the time trying to save those that had no mom and no dad. And I, I would come home and, and go in, and they'd be sleeping in their beds and I'd say, God, I'm sorry that I'm missing their lives so much, but there's so many kids. And here I am sitting now, uh, an old man with my daughter sitting next to me who loves Jesus and my other sons are in the building because God is faithful. Yeah. We have a tremendous opportunity and challenge. I'm telling you, you talk about believing God and folks say to me, oh, serving God is boring. Not the God I serve, I tell you. We have an opportunity in a country called Moldova. In that country, it's the poorest country in Europe. Now listen to this, this is really important. It is the poorest country in Europe. It has been voted the unhappiest place on earth. It has the highest percentage of alcoholism in the world. And out of that mess comes orphans. Families are broken. Fathers die young. Some leave and never come back. They go to a foreign country to, to get a job. And these orphans are abandoned. Not orphans as in mom and dad being dead, Almost worse than that, mom and dad not caring. And they put them in these institutions, horrendous places. And when they're 16, they're given a bus ticket to whatever name of town is on their birth certificate. A couple of dollars and they put out the door and a, a, a girl or a boy that's never been set a shop, knows nothing, naive, goes out and will walk to the bus station because, well, that's where they're meant to go, and they'll, then they'll realize there's no point getting on the bus to a town that no one knows me or wants me. And sitting at the bus station, a car will drive up, or worse still, a woman will walk up and say, would you like a job? And they're so desperate for a place to stay and sleep and food, only the clothes on their back. They'll say, yeah, okay and they'll get in a car, and they're gone. They use them 30 to 50 times a day until they kill them. They're all over the world. And what God has challenged us to do, we have homes, and our kids that were once orphans go to the orphanages and tell them and say, listen, there's a safe place to come at the orphan's hands. And we have been given a crazy opportunity, and we've taken it, to buy a village called Vatra. And we are going to take you there right now. And one of our girls, Ulazana, is going to help you see just a wee bit of what's happening in Vatra Village. Watch this. Hello, dear friends. My name is Ulizana, and I'm a part of the Orphan's Hands, the ministry which God used to change my life completely. I'm here now in Vatra Village, and this is one of the houses that is still in the process of being renovated. We finished already three houses, which look amazing. And I cannot wait to show you how we changed it. Actually, one of the girls from the Orphan's Hands, Nadia, she um, helped and actually she made all the design for these houses and we are just so blessed. First, I want to show you how the houses initially looked. The renovation of these houses, it's a long process and it needed a lot of uh, financing. But with the help of God and with your help, we finished already three houses, which are so amazing. So let's go to see the finished houses. So here we are in one of the houses which are finished. So take a look, please. We had to insulate the house. We had to change all the electric wires. We had to paint all the walls. We had to install the floors. And also, we installed the heating system, as you can see. We changed the windows. We installed the doors. 
There are so many things that we changed in this house, but it was worth it. So on behalf of all the young girls and boys who live in these beautiful houses that you made possible, I just want to say a huge thank you for believing in us and for giving them another chance in life, which life never gave it to them. So thank you so much. Thank you, Ulazana. Isn't she a beautiful girl? She was put at birth. Her mother had nowhere to put her. And she was put at birth into a tuberculosis hospital. And she spent 10 years in a tuberculosis hospital. Healthy child. Her mother never came to see her one time. She never left. She was never in a house. She never saw a kitchen. She had no idea what her family was. She lived in an institution alone. As you can see, she's Oriental in, in her look. She's Asian. Her father, her birth father, came from Kyrgyzstan. And um, that's where she gets that Oriental look. And because she was the only one that looked like that in the, in the, or, uh, in the hospital, everyone said she was hor ugly, hideous. The teachers told her, you're so ugly. All the kids, you are so ugly. And she lived completely alone. She never, she never had friends. She was all by herself. And one day a woman walked up, a European looking woman, and she says, I'm your mother. Ten years. And she says, you've got other sisters, three more sisters. Would you like to meet them? And she says, that's my dream, yes. And they took her to the, another orphanage. She took. She took him from the hospital to the orphanage and dropped her off. And she got there and spent six more years in the orphanage. Discovered the name she'd been given in the hospital wasn't her real name. They called her Christina there, but her real name was Ulizana. The first thing our sisters told her was that your mother is mentally insane. And we don't know how she's done what she's done without killing you. If you see your mother run away... And every time my mother would come to find them, all the daughters would have to run and hide in wardrobes for fear of the mother, what she might do. And because she was younger than her sisters, she never got to see them. I found her at 16, bitter and broken, with no hope. She sat and screamed at me in Romania. I'll never have a father. I will never call anyone a father. No one loves me. No one cares for me. And we loved her and, and spent hours and hours having her fight with us. And Jesus has changed her life. And she is a preacher of the gospel. You should hear her preach. I think, I think about what you said earlier about transfer of authority. And she spent 16 years of her life not even knowing her own name. Yeah. And not only does she know who she is now, oh, yeah. she knows who's she is. That girl loves Jesus. <laughs> and that girl that you saw on that screen is nothing like no. the girl that walked through that door. Oh, my what goodness. an anointing is on her life. Amazing. And um, there are so many more just like her waiting for somewhere to go, somewhere, a place where yeah. uh, they can come and they can live. And Vatra is just that. And I... I can't wait for more of them to I watch, find out who they are and whose they are. I watch in America, I'm sure you've seen it. Uh, it, it, it there's a, they play Silent Night and there's pictures of dogs freezing to death. Yeah. And, and it's, you know, save one of these dogs by giving $19 or whatever it is. I could take that same voice over that the man is speaking and I could replace every one of those dogs in the picture and cats with orphans. And, and all the words he talks about for the animals, we could, I, I, every time I see it, I get mad because we're, we've mixed up our, our value system when a dog and a cat, and I love dogs and cats, but they're not so important as an orphan. And we have an amazing opportunity with Vatra Village. You just saw us, Ulazana, walking through it. We have until the 1st of July to find $140,000. And we can open up the houses of Vatra Village and save 90 more kids like Ulazana. You can make such a miracle happen in the lives of these kids. They sit in orphanages, literally, waiting to be put on the street. They don't care about their education because there's no point because an orphan won't get hired. 
They sit in loneliness and despair. And our kids, who were once orphans, Ulizana amongst them, goes to the orphanage and sits down and says, let me tell you something. I slept in that bed for 10 years. This was my room five years ago. And God has changed my life around. And that's what we are doing and that's what we are believing God to do through Vatra Village. So I want you to pray right now. If you could be one of 140 people, if I could take you there and say we could, we could buy this whole place for $1,000, you would say, I'll do it. Well, that's the miracle we're praying for. Will you ask God, what will you have me to do to make the miracle of Vatra Village a reality? Pray about it, will you? For over 25 years, the Cameron family has been changing the lives of orphans in Romania and Moldova. From providing running water, flushing toilets, and clean wells, to coal for heat, new windows, as well as food and clothing, they champion the physical needs of the orphans in these broken and desolate countries. Many of Moldova's orphans are saved from the horrors of trafficking through homes founded by the Camerons, and in the process, orphans become daughters and sons. They come to know their Heavenly Father and are forever changed by the love of Jesus. God helped the Camerons lift these amazing young men and women out of darkness. Now, no longer orphans, they want to return and invade that very same darkness with the light of Jesus Christ. The Orphan's Hands equips these daughters and sons to become missionaries. Your monthly gift of $31 will allow us to rescue and take in more girls and boys, saving them from the hell of human trafficking. Your monthly partnership will allow us to care for those in the Orphan's Hands homes in Moldova and the Ukraine. When you partner with us on a monthly basis, giving a dollar a day, you will receive every 30 seconds, a testimonial book of the lives changed by the Orphan's Hands. If you want to join Philip and Chrissy in taking care of these precious young people, please contact us today by calling 833-DAILY-FAITH. You can also give by going online to philipdcameron.com or by writing to Post Office Box 242246, Montgomery, Alabama, 36124. So many lives depend on what we do. Thank you for loving the lost. Philip would love to hear from you. If there is a need for prayer in your life and you want him to pray for your unsaved loved ones, reach out to Philip at 833 Daily Faith. We believe for great things for you. Contact him today. If you are a pastor, church leader, or business owner and would like to have Philip Cameron come and speak to your church, conference, or event, please call 1-833-DAILY-FAITH or go to pastors.philipdcameron.com or request by mail at attention, Andrew Cameron, Post Office Box 242246, Montgomery, Alabama, 36124.